Good evening. Praise the Lord. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you tonight in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored, Lord, we're able to come in fellowship in your presence, hear your word, and we give you all the praise and glory that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, some more Bibles over here to Mark chapter 11. Now, here in Mark chapter 11, this one, Jesus cursed the fig tree. And so the scripture says here in verse 21, And Peter called and remember said, Master, behold, the fig tree thou cursed with away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea. Shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, teach over what it saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things are bizarre when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Now think about it. This is two ways that Jesus is teaching us here how to use our faith. One way is speaking the mountains of problems. Like when Jesus spoke to the wind and waves when he was aboard that ship in Mark chapter 4, beginning in verse 35. What's he doing? Well, he's taking authority over it. And that's what we do in his name. Now this verse 24, Jesus said here, Therefore I send you what things to desire when you pray, believe you receive them and shall have them. You know, God wants us to have, wants us to have the desires of our heart. And everyone's different. You know, every believer is different. You know, we all believe a little bit different. But anyway, what, what God wants us to know, how much he loves us, that he trusts us to ask him for what things soever we desire. Now, since we're born again through Jesus Christ, then our heart's perfect and right with God. Hey, we've had some stuff in our head, you know, that try to, try to mis mislead us or misguide us. But we know, you know, we're supposed to line up everything we do with the word of God. And I've messed up in that area. But thank God for the word that always brings you back to it by the Holy Spirit. But anyway, Jesus taught us here. Therefore, I send you what things are bizarre when you pray, believe, receive them, and you shall have them. Now, this is something that we, we want to take advantage of. Remember, Jesus said also in John chapter 16, verse 23 and 24, Talking about the day he's going to leave, be crucified. He said, Verily I say in you, verily, verily, I say in you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them. Let me read, I'm going to mess that up. Over here, Mark, in uh, John chapter 16, Jesus said here, verily, uh, verily, In that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say in you, what's the reason you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto you've asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive the joy of me before. Now that's a lot like Mark eleven twenty four. 24. We have Jesus teaching us here to ask for what we want. And when we do this, we're to believe and receive it. And all of us have desires in our heart that we'd like to see come to pass or receive from God. And Jesus said there in Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, If you be natural, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more should your Heavenly Father give good things to them that ask Him? And James says, we have not because we ask not. I guess we could go through a whole life wondering, maybe I should ask God for that. But, you know, we want to ask now. Find out what we desire in our life and set our faith on that in Jesus' name. And any obstacles that try to get in the way, we remove them in Jesus' name. We say, no, I refuse that. I, I, I don't accept that in the name of Jesus. And just start out with that kind of desire. And just back it up with God's word and be bold and brave enough to ask your Father God. That's why I took, one of the reasons why he told us to come to his throne room boldly. Let us therefore come boldly in the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we take this scripture here about prayer in Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore I send you what things serve we desire when you pray. Believe, receive them, and you shall have them. And Jesus said, In that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily I send you. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Whatsoever. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. Now, that's what God taught us. Jesus said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Shall I ask what you will? Shall be done to you. Praise God for that. So we take these scriptures like Mark eleven twenty three, 23, like uh, John chapter 15, verse 7 or verse 8, and like John chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. And, you know, they're, they're, they're prayer building blocks. It gives us a solid foundation to build our prayer on. And now, you know, sometimes you got to be cautious about who you share this with because they may not be real on, on board about you believing God to get a yacht or something. But nevertheless, you know, because they're so often what comes is guilt. Well, don't you think that's too much or too extravagant? Or, you know, that doesn't, you know, I remember one time uh, there was this guy, you know, uh, and uh, he'd got a, a real bright, like, Canary, Canary Yellow Corvette, brand new one. And so he's someplace, you know, and he's walking out in the parking lot for, out of this church. He's walking to go to this car, and somebody came up and looked at the car and looked at him and looked at the car and said, you know, that, that car is just not you. Well, he said, apparently you don't know me. 
<laughs> now, see, now, that's what you go through. And the more times you tell people, you, you know, I advise you to be led by God on that, the more kind of unbelief and doubt you can get kind of dumped in on you. Because a lot of times other believers aren't really thrilled about you. They found out you're believing God for whatever they think is extravagant, costs too much money. What about this? What about that? you got to follow God for yourself. But I've run across a little bit of that stuff. And after a while, you're thinking, you know, probably should be more, I'm talking about me now, more slick about who I tell these, this is to. And there's no sense bragging when it manifests. You know, people say, how you get it? You, or how you got it? You just say, well, you know. Uh, I, I, you could say well, what you scriptures you use and said, and let them know what God did for me. He'll do it for you. He's no respecter of persons. Instead of boasting about it's my faith and I did this and I did that. No, I just, you know, play it down a little bit and just thank God for it. But God wants us to have these desires. He, he told us in his word. And to me, when I first heard Mark eleven twenty four, 24, it was thrilling to know that God actually said that. And through Jesus Christ, well, again, I wasn't ready for the, repercussions of what other people is going to say about that. You know, some people got really disturbed about that. And then some people sick, some other people, why don't you go talk to Jesse? You know, you know, you happen to know what he prayed for or what he's believing God for. Yeah. Well, nevertheless, Jesus said there, what things soever you desire, no disclaimer. Think about this. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. And uh, once you do that, hey, you're, it's settled. You're like a childlike faith. You just you, you prayed. You know your Father God's going to cause it to materialize, whatever it may be. Thank God for it. I mean, you couldn't possibly ask too big. We're talking about we've already, we've already received Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. For born again, we have. I mean, what could be greater than that? And you know, in Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-two, instructs us that if God didn't withhold Jesus, He's not going to withhold anything else. And God promised us in His Word. And Jesus, before he left, let, let the disciples. And, of course, you and I know there in Mark 16, verse 23 and 24. In that day you shall, ask, you, you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I send you. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will do, give it you. Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. It's like a little kid, you know, when they get their new bicycle or rollerblades or whatever world or, you know, Xbox, they're thrilled. Yeah. Look, what I've, they, they, they probably saw themselves with it to begin with. And that's important, too, to see yourself with it. See yourself enjoying it, whatever it may be. And thank God for that. And just begin to praise God and, and thank the Lord for it in the name of Jesus. And by doing so, hey, it's one way we keep our faith active. It's enjoyable to ask God for things and just praise God and thank God that we believe we received. And not putting any stipulations on it. He did. He said, what things are bizarre when you pray. Again, if we're born again, we've already received Jesus. So we've seen the greatest that could be a gift that God could, has ever given is he gave his only begotten son. If, he, if God didn't withhold Jesus, and thank God he did, he's not going to withhold anything else. And he gives us the responsibility. He trusts us that we'll ask for the right thing. And think about that, you know. He knows our heart. It's new. If we're born again, we're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Our heart's perfect because the Spirit of God came and dwelt in us the moment we got born again. I want to encourage you to take Mark eleven twenty four, and 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 just re keep reading it to yourself. I'm quoting it to yourself, and then when it comes time that you've got this desire, could be today, ask God for it, and believe you receive it. Just begin to thank God. We're asking God in Jesus' name. That's how we approach God, and just know that your Father God wants you to have it. And just pray, receive it, thank God for it, and see yourself with it. I enjoyed being with you tonight. I want to encourage you to keep taking these promises and use them for your life. You're going to be glad you did. Till next time, Brother Rich Mind, I love you. I'm praying for you. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough.